Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I'm back with a video on the anniversary of the launch of the Playdate handheld. This little device is such a curiosity. It attempts to do something very different than pretty much every other handheld on the market. And now that I've lived with it for a year, I wanted to give you my updated thoughts on it. The biggest being, there are now over 400 games made for this thing. That just blows my mind. And so I've downloaded what I think are some of the better ones or the more interesting ones, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on that, as well as just what I think about this thing now that I've lived with it for over a year. And if you remember my original review video, I was, I was pretty critical of this thing, but I also think I was pretty fair. There were some things that I liked and some things that I uh, I didn't like. But to give you a refresher of what the Playdate actually is, as you see here, it is a relatively unique looking handheld. And it has really two unique features. The first being that analog crank right there. So not every game uses this, but a lot of them do. And essentially what it is, is it is just a new way of controlling certain games. And if a game is designed to take advantage of it, it can be kind of fun and unique. And again, unlike anything else that you've ever used. And I'm gonna talk about some of those games in a bit. The other feature that I like decidedly much less is the screen. As you see here, it is only black and white, but it's also non-backlit. It's just reflective. Meaning the only way you can really see it and use it is if you have a strong light source behind you. And I can't tell you how many times in the last year I've wanted to pick this up and play it only to go, uh, like I don't have a light right behind me. Maybe I'm on the couch and the lights are dim because my wife is watching a show. It's impossible to use this thing. But I will say that once you are in the right conditions, the screen does look really nice and actually the games look very sharp on it. Also, the build quality of this device feels very good. And it should because this is not a cheap product. Originally, it sold for $180. However, because of inflation, I assume, they've actually increased the price to $200 right now. Now that does include season one games. So essentially if you buy it, it does come with the first 24 games. But a lot of people who watched my original video review of this thought this looked like more like a $40 device. And I would say on video, it may look like a $40 device. However, in your hands and in person, it it does have a high quality to it. It feels like it's very well built. Um, again, I have no complaints as far as that goes. And one of the smartest things that they did with this thing is open it up so that anybody could develop games for it. And like I said, there are over 400 games released for this in just the first year. That is quite amazing. The other thing that changed about this, and it's pretty significant, is that Literally just about, I think a month ago, they did an update to the operating system and they added something called Catalog. Previously, if you wanted to add extra games to this, you would need to sideload it through a website. And that worked really well, actually. I was very impressed with that. But now with Catalog, it's even easier. So essentially what they're doing here is curating the best kind of homebrew games or extra games that are made for it and putting them into the catalog right on the device. So it's very easy to go in there and do a little bit of shopping. You don't need to go you know, in your browser on your computer. Um, basically these are games that they all recommend and you can get them very easily, again, directly on the play date. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. Now, full disclosure, they did unlock all of the catalog games for this video. However, I've also gone and purchased additional games myself just so that I could have a good mix of the stuff that's out there. So over the past year or so, yeah, I've, I've added a bunch of games that I purchased too. The first one that really caught my eye is a game called Grand Tour Legends. And you see it here. And the reason why it caught my eye is very obvious because it was like, wow, it's like doing video almost. It looks really cool. So essentially this is a cycling game and what you're doing there with the crank is emulating you pedaling your bike. 
And essentially what you're doing here is monitoring your endurance or your energy. That's that bar that's over on the left there. And so you can't just sit there and crank as fast as you possibly can because then you'll run out of energy. You really need to pace yourself. And what's cool about this game is that it takes into account hills. So for instance, it you'll burn more energy when you are pedaling up a hill, but then you can also rest a little bit going down a hill. And so you really need to pace yourself. It's actually, it's a pretty addictive and very cool looking game. Here's another one that caught my eye called Skew. And essentially what this is, it starts off very similar to like the, the trench run in Star Wars, but it's also mixing in a little bit of Flappy Bird, I guess, because essentially you can increase the propeller and therefore go back and forth and try to avoid things in that, that trench, I guess. But then a little bit later in the level, it'll go to a top-down view, almost like Tempest, where you're basically just trying to avoid hitting anything. It's a pretty simple game, but it looks and plays great. Here's another game called Real Steel. And essentially in this game, you are a thief and you are hanging on a hook. And essentially what you are doing, it, it's kind of like fishing in that you are letting the thief go up and down. But what's happening though, is that it swings back and forth. So you're trying to pick up loot and get as far down as possible while trying to avoid traps. Some of the traps are laser beams and also security cameras, and you can pass through them very quickly, but you don't wanna get stuck there, otherwise they'll knock you off and you'll have to pick yourself back up. It's a, it's a very addictive, but also can be frustrating game, but I like how it uses that crank. Here's an interesting one called The Botanist. So this is basically a sci-fi visual novel slash comic. And essentially what you're doing is using mostly the crank to move between the different panels. But as you see here, there's a little bit of a 3D effect that is applied that looks really, really cool. And occasionally there are some interactive sections in here, but there's nothing too deep. And you can complete this in, I don't know, probably like 20 minutes or so. It's definitely kind of a proof of concept thing, but I could see where if this was a success that maybe an entire series of you know visual novels could be released for it. My friends at Too High Labs released a new game for this called Carve Junior. They previously released a game called Whitewater Wipeout, which was the surfing game on here, which was one of the best games to launch with the Playdate. And here they are back again with kind of another take on that, but instead of a surfboard, basically this is snowboarding. They definitely upped the complexity of this game as well as the graphics. This is actually a really nice looking game. I will say that it's, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Uh, it's kind of weird to, to control the this, this snowboard with that crank, but I definitely dig the trick system. So this is one I need to put a little bit more time into. This is a cool one. This is an old school dungeon crawler called Legend of Etad. Basically, if you ever played any of those old school games like Eye the Beholder or Might and Magic, this is gonna feel right at home. And I was actually pretty impressed with this game. It looks really good on this black and white screen. And just like those old games, this is grid-based movement and it's got that real-time combat. Um, you're solving puzzles, you're going through dungeons, trying to unlock doors and just survive. So this is actually a pretty cool game. Here's a puzzle game that is very much inspired by Tetris Attack. This is very much a match three game, but what's going on here is that all of the blocks are automatically coming from the bottom and essentially you wanna match three of them. You do that by moving that little block around and essentially you can swap two things. Um, very different than normal Tetris. Again, if you played Tetris Attack, I think you'll feel right at home here. Here's a really fun game called Crunky, and this is a very simple game, but also very addictive. Essentially what's going on here is that your little character is bouncing automatically. You have no control over that. All you really have control over is how much left or right movement you have with that crank. And essentially you're trying to pick up points and just survive as long as possible. <laughs> This game is way harder than it looks, but it's also really addictive because it's so short. When you die, you just wanna try, try again. Here's a game called Bifusion. This is really neat. So essentially, I guess this is like a fusion reactor and you see how these, 
these, I don't know, like electrons or something. I don't know what they are, but basically these numbered circles are coming into the chamber. And what you can do is you can use the D-pad to reach out and grab a number. And you, you see that you have three spots that you can store numbers over on the left. Now, what you're trying to do here is control the amount of these, I don't know, these electrons. I don't know what, basically you, you don't want this thing to fill up too much, otherwise it'll blow up. So you want to fire the same number that you have stored over on the left to the ones that are bouncing around uh, in the chamber itself on the right. But the clever part about this is that if you do two and two, well, that'll make four. So now you have a four bouncing around. So you want to grab a four and then bounce it off another four to create an eight. And essentially that's how you're controlling how many things are in here. I'm probably making this sound more complicated than it is, but it's a really fun game. And I like how it uses the analog crank to, to do the aiming. It feels very nice. Another game I think super addictive on here is called Generations. This is another match three, but essentially what's going on here is that you are trying to match up three of a generation to then evolve into the next generation. So for instance, three stork tiles will then evolve into a baby. And then you would want to get three baby tiles that would then evolve into a small child. And then you evolve them into generations. There is an option in this game to turn on numbers, which I think makes this even more obvious. You see it right here. So I'm playing it with the, the numbers turned on. And again, I think that makes a little bit more sense, but I do like the fact, and I actually originally played this game with just the faces. So it, it's really cool, very addictive. And because anybody can make games for this thing, you are starting to see some ports of other titles you might be more familiar with. For instance, there is a version of One Bit Frogger, which is a pretty decent port of Frogger. Again, this is, I'm assuming, not official. I. I don't know if it is, I'm just saying it's it's available there if you wanted to check it out and download it. There's also a version of Celeste, which is a really popular game that uh, I believe originally came out maybe on Steam and then the Switch. And so as you see here, actually it looks kind of like Celeste and it's just running on the play date with, you know, only technically two colors. Here is Tapeworm Disco Puzzle, which was a game that I believe I originally played, man, on the Evercade, I think. So it's a game that's been ported to a bunch of different systems. I'm sure it's on Steam, but again, here you can play it also on the Playdate. One thing I mentioned in my original review was how much storage space that you have on the Playdate itself. I mentioned that it has four gigs of storage. And at the time I suspected that was gonna be enough for most people. And it turns out I am right, because as you see here, again, a year later with a bunch of games installed on it, I still have two gigs free. None of these games are very big, and I suspect that's because of the nature of the system itself. I mean, the graphics aren't gonna be very large, and the games typically are fairly simple. And so as you see, you can just pack the Playdate full of stuff. And again, I just barely scratched the surface of the games that are out there for this thing. So in closing, what do I think of the Playdate after having it for over a year? I would say overall, my opinion of the handheld itself as a piece of hardware hasn't changed too much. The number one thing for me, and I know I keep harping on this, is that I just don't like how the screen is because in my situation, I don't always have a bright light behind me. It's really frustrating to be excited to use something and then have to worry about that. You know, this isn't 1991, you know what I mean? When we would have to worry about whether screens were backlit or just not good. It seems weird to have to even take that into consideration in 2023. And so I really do hope maybe they'll do a version 2.0 at some point and give people the option to have a backlit screen. And I do think that this is a very niche product, right? I mean, this is not gonna be for everybody. It's really for people who are looking for something that's just a little bit different, you know, just a little bit left of what's normal, you know? I mean, 
you gotta be into the crank thing, right? You gotta be into these games that look very retro. You gotta you gotta be you gotta be willing to just go there. And thankfully, a lot of people in the community have. I mean, again, over 400 games. Not all those are probably excellent games, obviously. But as you see here, there are some really cool experiences. And developers do seem to be taking advantage of that unique crank as well as the visual style of that screen. And so that's where we're at with the Playdate after a year. But I would love to know down in the comments what you think. Did you pick up a Playdate? Did you use it last year? What are some of the games that you've discovered on it that you'd like to share with others? And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.